Hi, I'm Todd Matheson with Victory Lutheran Church in Mesa, Arizona. Thanks for joining with me for some Daily Hope. Today I'm completing a, a three-part series where we're looking at the doxology of the Lord's Prayer. You know, when we pray to our Father in Heaven, really ascribing to Him for Thine is the Kingdom, check, and the power, check, and the glory. That's what I want us to consider today. Glory. Glory is something ascribed to royalty, right? An earthly king has sovereign reign, that's his kingdom, where his will holds sway, that's power, and glory? Well, just think of the coronations and royal events that you've witnessed. Now that is royal glory on display, isn't it? Something to behold. Even royal funerals exhibit a monarch's glory. Remember the recent funeral of Queen Elizabeth II of England? The crown jewels, the magnificence of the abbey, the parade of the powerful paying homage to the late queen. The funeral service itself, you know, it was, it was a masterpiece displaying the glory of the monarch. One of the crown jewels placed on the queen's coffin was the royal globe with the cross on it. It's called the orb. Its counterpart is the royal scepter. The royal orb stands for the, the Christian sovereignty of the queen or king of England. Here's a bit of history for you. The sovereign's orb it's made of hollowed gold with jeweled bands divided into three parts representing the three known continents at the time of its creation. Hmm. During the coronation, the Archbishop of Canterbury places the orb in the monarch's right hand and says, Receive this orb set under the cross and remember that the whole world is subject to the power and empire of Christ, our Redeemer. Quite the statement, isn't it? The rightful reign of the king or queen of England, and really of, of many countries, in fact, is established by linking the sovereign's rule being the will of God. In other words, it is God who has placed the monarch on the throne. So with the cross connected up, on the top, the royal orb declares the sovereign's divine right to rule with all power and all glory. Now, when Christians pray the doxology of the Lord's Prayer, we might think we're ascribing wonderful blessings of our King of Kings, the whole of creation as God's kingdom, the Almighty who has ultimate cosmic power and glory. Well, just read in the book of Revelation and get a glimpse into real power and glory. But I want you to know something today about our King of Kings, Jesus Christ, his glory. Well, it was revealed when he first came to earth, born in a barn, placed in a feeding trough, growing up in a lowly carpenter's shop, then three years of public ministry wandering mostly around the wilderness that ended in a brutal death. And get this, the Bible says that that's when God's glory was on full display by Christ Jesus. God's glory revealed by Jesus Christ on his cross. The Bible records these words in the first verses of John chapter 14. After Jesus said this, he looked toward heaven and prayed. So he's praying, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son that your son may glorify you. For you granted him authority over all people that he might give eternal life to all those you have given him. Now this is eternal life, Jesus says, that they know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I have brought you glory, Jesus says to his Father, brought you glory on earth by finishing the work you gave me to do. And now, Father, 
Glorify me in your presence with the glory I had with you before the world began. <laughs> Notice here how Jesus is asking his Father in heaven to reveal his glory through what was about to happen. Jesus' crucifixion. Jesus accomplishing God's plan of salvation for you and for me. That's the true glory of God. Yes, the full glory and power of God will be ultimately unleashed when Jesus comes again. But dear friend, let's not get caught up in the world's take on glory. <clears throat> true glory, it's not about fame or fortune or power or rule. It's about what Christ did, serving others sacrificially. It's about the suffering servant, Jesus Christ, accomplishing his Father's will in a seemingly powerless, gloryless way. And yet this is the kind of life then that Jesus calls for you and me to walk in. Sacrificial service to others, even if it's not full of power and glory. So if you're not feeling very powerful or glorious, cheer up. Because that's the pathway Jesus walked and revealed God's glory. And God's glory can be on display through your life when you walk in the way of serving others, not seeking glory for yourself, but loving your neighbor as an act of worship of your true King, Christ Jesus. Let's pray. Father in heaven, you sent your son to accomplish your mission. Lord Jesus, you've let us know that that's when you're revealing the Father's glory in accomplishing this mission of redemption, of saving us from the penalty for our sin and redeeming us and, and sanctifying us, declaring us righteous in your sight through faith in you. It's a wonderful ending, but what an inglorious pathway you had to walk in order to accomplish it. Well, we thank you for doing that, Jesus. Thank you for being willing to humble yourself and, and, and pay the penalty that we deserve to pay in setting us free. And not only setting us free, but then empowering us by your Holy Spirit now to, to follow in your footsteps and to serve others, revealing the Father's glory again in the same way that you have done. So help Help anyone who's watching or listening right now, who's feeling down, who's feeling oppressed, who's feeling very powerless, certainly not glorious, to know that that's where you are. That's where you're found. You're found in the small places in life. And it's there that your glory and power is revealed in small acts of sacrifice and service. So help us to be people that reflect and reveal the Father's glory by living the way you did, Jesus. I ask this in your precious name. Amen. Hey, thanks for joining with me today. Uh, be sure to like and share and subscribe and go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.